right, so we are now going to actually install the software. Finally! So, um, one of the most important things about installing the software is patience. So, what we have is our, we have our USB here and our USB stick, and if you want to know how to build those, you can click on this video here. Alright, so now that we have our USB, we're going to go ahead and plug it into the back of the computer directly into the motherboard and not a USB on the actual case because those can be slower. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in the back of my computer, we'll jump over the computer and get it going. Okay, so one very important thing to think about is we also need a wired in keyboard. So a keyboard that wires directly into the computer because wireless ones don't always actually work. All right, once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and open the BIOS. To open the specific BIOS on my computer, it is delete. Majority of the time, it is delete to open BIOSes. I would check with your motherboard manual to see what it is to get into your BIOS. All right, so we're gonna actually set three things in the BIOS. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go all the way over here to over here and enter classic mode. Um, now, let's go ahead and move our mouse out of the way. I don't use the mouse, some people do but I don't. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to save and exit. We're gonna go down to load optimized defaults. So go ahead and go ahead and click that and do that. I already did that so I won't worry about that. Then one thing is we're gonna go over to peripherals and we are going to disable this audio LED. Um, I don't know, you could probably have this on and be okay. I just kept it disabled. Um, next thing that we're going to go over is we're going to go down to BIOS features and we are going to roll down to VTD and this setting we need to make sure is disabled. So go ahead and disable that right there. Okay, and now next go ahead and go up and hit save and exit. Exit out of the BIOS. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and boot into our USB selection where we can choose boot device. Um, this is in this particular motherboard, it's F12. It can be different for different motherboards. Our SanDisk Cruiser, that's the one we're after. Um, it's actually the UFI one that we're trying to boot from. Um, not the SanDisk Cruiser without the UFI. If you made your USB drive a legacy support, you will need to boot from the non UFI bootable drive. So now we're just going to go to the SanDisk UFI. I built this USB drive as a UFI USB stick. I think in my other video, I made it a legacy support. You can do that too, they both work. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to settings. I'm gonna go down one, and this is basically how you type in boot flags. Boot flags are used for when you have a problem trying to boot into your computer. Link down in the description of a list of boot flags and what they do. And I'm definitely gonna add a boot flag here, and it's called slash V. Um, what this does is seeing your normal boot screen, you're gonna see the code. This works really good for diagnosing problems. So once we're done with that, we're going to boot into the USB drive, not our main drive that's in our computer, the USB drive here. So we'll go ahead and run that. When this is done running, it should bring us into the installer, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, we are done. Here it is all booted into the USB drive. Keep in mind, you might need to use boot flags to get into this stage. And we're going to go ahead and choose our language, which is English, and hit continue. Instead of keep hitting continue, I'm going to go ahead and run over and go to Disk Utility, which is right over there. I love how the mouse gets bigger. Disk Utility there. And then we're going to go to our main drive that's built into our computer. Not our USB drive, but our main one. And it's not the main drive, not the name main drive. It's this S. T3, blah, 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 continue on. So when we want to click on, then we're going to actually hit this erase button up here. Then I'm going to actually repartition this as main drive because I like my, my drive on my computer to be named main. You don't have to do this. You can name this to whatever. You can name it El Capitan or whatever. Format OSX extended journal. That's what we want. GUI partition map. That is what we want. Perfect. Right, go ahead and hit erase. Keep in mind, this is repartitioning the drive. Just make sure you have no data on the drive that you are erasing, because you will lose it. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and quit Disk Utility. And now we're at the Setup menu. Now we can continue through this. Continue, Agree. Now we're going to select our main drive. Not our USB drive, but our main drive. This one here, the one that we reformatted. So now we're done with that, go ahead and hit Continue. And let this install. So when this is done installing, it will want to reboot. Uh, just let it reboot. It's done. So let's go ahead and restart our computer. So now, when this restarts, what our plan is, we don't want to boot into the USB again. 
we actually want to boot into our main drive. So now that we've, what we basically did was install our software onto the main drive. So now, instead of booting from the USB, we're gonna actually boot from the USB into the main drive. So now this is the time where we need to type in one extra boot flag. Usually you need the boot flag when you're trying to get into the USB, but not all the time. Sometimes after you install it with the USB, it might boot just fine with the USB, but then you go to try it with the main drive and it might not boot so well. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a couple boot flags here, a slash V so I can see what's going on. Not necessary, but I, I just like it because I like to see the code behind stuff. And the special boot flag here is NV underscore disable equals one. So then we'll just go down, hit return. So now we're gonna boot from into the main drive. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we are not booted in, so go ahead and go through all the setup information. All right, so now that you're in your computer, we're gonna have to install a couple things. Um, now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is, I went ahead and dragged all my files that I need over here on this USB drive. Let's go ahead and drag that over there. All right, so there are a few things you need, and you actually have to do these in order. I'll leave a link down in the description of all the files that you need. If you're doing my exact build, you're going to want to download the exact files. Make sure they are updated to the latest update of whatever update that you are installing. If you don't have my exact build, just install the drivers that you have for your motherboard and the stuff that you have for your particular boards. Um, uh, in this case, I, if you're doing my exact build and you have my exact stuff, you're going to want to do this pretty much to the T. Audio can sometimes be a little tricky to get going on these computers. I actually pot patch the audio and I'll show you how to do that. So, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and start with our first application. So go ahead and open MultiBeast. Now that we have our first application open, we're gonna go ahead, you can actually go over to Quick Start. I don't use that, I just go straight to drivers. For audio, we're gonna install this ALC1150 Realtek audio driver. That's the audio that's built inside of our computer. Once we get that done, then we can go over to mask. We're gonna do the fake SMC, blah, 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 1150, whatever that is. We go over to network, we're gonna go into Intel, and we're gonna go and select the top one, which is Apple Intel E, 1000 E, V, blah, 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 version. In USB, we're gonna select third party, USB, three. Um, we're gonna go over to bootloader, so we're gonna install our U5 bootloader. If you did a legacy bootloader, you can do the legacy as well. I did the UFI, personally I like it better, um, but whichever which you used, I would, I would stick to that one. Go over to customization, we don't need any graphics, SSDT, we don't need any of those. We need system identification, we need that, and we're gonna go to Mac, Mac Pro 3.1 is what we want there. And then we're gonna go over to build, and we're gonna make sure this is selected on our main drive and not any of our USB drives, but on our main one. Go ahead and hit install. All right, we are done. So we'll go ahead and quit MultiBeast. And keep in mind too, the drivers that you install for this is based upon your build. If you have my exact build, you'll probably install very similar drivers. Um, but keep in mind that if you have my exact build and everything precisely to the T that what I have, you'll need to do this exact thing that I'm doing here and select all the same things. Um, keep in mind, if you have my exact same graphics card, you will need this graphics card driver, which I've installed here, and I'll leave a link down in the description for that. These two applications we'll use after we reboot. So we're gonna go ahead and open the driver. And this is our NVIDIA driver. So this is good to get our graphics card working 100%, because right now it's kind of partially not working. If I was to open Safari, you can really see the glitches. See how like none of it's showing up and it's got all this like things. Your graphics card shouldn't be doing that. It should be showing up nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and quit Safari. And that's what this graphics NVIDIA driver does. It makes our graphics card very compatible with Mac and helps it out quite a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue, continue, agree. We're gonna make sure that this is installed on the main drive, which it is, install. Type in our super secret password. Uh, confirm and installation, that's just asking you, is it okay that we're gonna restart your computer after this? All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and hit restart. Now, here's the cool thing. We don't need to type into any boot flags or anything this time around. This should just shut down it should restart and come right back up, and everything's good. And 
and bingo, we are in our computer. All right, now that we are booted in and we have these, we do not need these two applications anymore. Those can get out of there. Now we're gonna focus on patching our audio. Because if you realize, our audio doesn't work. It gives us an X sign and says, hey, you have no audio. So we're gonna now get our audio working. So to do this, we actually have to do a couple things. One, there's an eFi drive that doesn't show up on our drive, so you don't see the drive anywhere. And so what we can do is we can go to Finder, um, go into Preferences, Sidebar, and just select our main drive so we see our main drive there. So here's our main drive, but there's no eFi drive. We see eFi backups, but we don't see an eFi drive here. So what we're gonna need to do is mount our eFi drive. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this application, link down in the description. I'll keep links to all of this. Type in our super secret password. Okay, so now that we got the application, now keep in mind that these applications, you might actually have to go in to preferences and allow them because these applications are from unidentified developers. So you'll need to make sure that you actually go into uh, system preferences and go into security and privacy and go in and actually say open, otherwise it won't let you open it. All right, now that you got it open, you're gonna select the disk 0s1, not the disk 1s1, but the one above it, the disk 0s1. This is your first disk, this is your main drive. So go ahead and hit okay to that. And what you're gonna wanna do is hit mount. And now if we go into finder, we see this extra eFi drive here that wasn't here before. And then we can see and have access to our um, boot flags and plist, config.plist. This is nice to have access to when you're adding boot flags. Um, so once we have that, we can now just, now we can run our next application. So now that we have this eFi drive mounted, now we're gonna go ahead and patch our audio. Because right now our audio doesn't work, uh, so now we have to patch it. So let's go ahead and double click on this, go in and Go into audio.clover. Blah, blah 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 blah. Open our next audio patcher. I'll have a link down in the description for this file or this folder that you can download. We're gonna go down to this one here, which is the third one down, and this is your Realtek one. So we're gonna go double click on that. It's gonna launch us a file here, and it's a command. We're gonna double click on that command. We're gonna say open. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Your computer will not open this file because it will say audio blah 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 is from an unidentified developer. We do not open it. So, we have to go into System Preferences, Security and Privacy, then we're gonna say Open From Anywhere, and Open. So that will now open the application, we'll launch our application. We're gonna go ahead and type our password in. This is just your login password that you use to log into your computer. Okay, now it's gonna ask us a few questions. It's going to run a bit of code and it's gonna say, okay, to patch. It says everything's running good, it's everything's good. Now, confirm Realtek ALC 1150. That's what we have. So we're going to type in the command console, Y, Y for yes and for no. In this case we have, we definitely have an ALC 1150 uh, driver. So yes on that. So we're gonna go ahead and type in Y. It's gonna ask us one other thing. Uh, patch apple hda.txt. This you can say yes or no to. I'm just gonna say yes to it um, because I do want it to patch that. Um, or type in Y for yes. Clover Audio ID Injection, Y for that as well. Click in Y and use Audio ID 1, Y for that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click Y and hit Enter. And let that run its code. Process complete. Beautiful, now that it says process complete, we're gonna go ahead and quit Terminal. And if you try your audio right now, you'll notice it doesn't work, or at least it's showing that it doesn't work. Um, you actually have to go into System Preferences and go into Sound and go into output and change your output to line out, audio line out port. Now there are two audio lines out ports, one's in the front of my Hackintosh and one's in the back port. I'm using the back port currently. So we're gonna go ahead and click that on. We're gonna go ahead and cancel out of that, cancel out of that, and now we're done. Audio should work. So we're gonna go ahead and go to YouTube and go see if our audio really does work. Today we're going to be 3D printing and clean excluder. Audio for works. EI. Has uh, several settings. You can actually open the beautiful completely up. Our audio now works on our computer. How cool and awesome is that? Lock it down. Um, keep in mind I had to plug the audio jack into the pink port in the back. Okay, 
We are working, audio is working, everything is functioning. Your computer is now successfully a Hackintosh. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, like, comment, and doodly we'll see you next week. Go ahead and open that up. You know, beast right here, we're gonna hit continue, 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 continue. Oh my gosh, there's something continues. Agree, and then we're gonna go ahead and select our Alright, here's the part. Let's go ahead and put it on the beehive. Actually work, so make sure you have that installed. We're gonna we're gonna highlight the El Capi tin. And then we're gonna hit continue. You can use section I can decide if I want the bees to go directly in, shut them completely down, or make it so the queen can't get out. I don't have that on when I first move the bees in to make sure the queen stays.